Hey everybody, so today I want to show you the second video um, of the automatically linking files um, on BIM 360 or automatically linking Revit models um, on BIM 360. So, uh, but before we get into that, I want to point out a couple things. The first video, um, if you didn't get to see it, was the Dynamo getting uh, link data. Uh, this will be right before this video so just go back a video uh, and you'll be able to see that um, and then also this started I we wanted to automatically link models and I know I, I heard about it on LinkedIn but I never dove into it so I googled some stuff and I found Luke Johnson's blog this is where it started this workflow is not what we're doing I had to customize this uh, quite a bit to get it to work the way that we wanted which was to be able to have like cl imagine that clarity automatically run these dynamo scripts and we don't have to touch anything this workflow does require some manual setup which we um, avoid uh, in, in the scripts that I created so if you want to read about this this is a really helpful blog and it helped me out uh, getting started with this script and so check this out and I think he has the scripts in here as well that you can download also, one other thing I want to mention, and something I did mention in the last video, is when I was trying to figure out uh, the links um, and the information I needed to create an actual link, uh, because the a API allows you to go in here and create links, but it needs certain data. The way that I figured that out, and I didn't mention this in the last video, was I went in here and I added a link. Um, so these are placeholder links, but I added an actual BIM 360 link. And what I did from there was I selected on that link, and for example, we're going to select on this wall. And I went to the managed, or actually, sorry, the add-ins tab, and then Revit lookup, and then I can do snoop current selection. And then you can see this gives you a ton of properties. It gives you uh, methods. It gives you just a ton of stuff and sh uh, shows you all the different things that are that element have so um, that's what I um, did to, tr uh, to to figure out what it is that I needed what parameters where they were coming from uh, because if you watched my last video we looked at forge and um, I figured out okay this is what's in the links um, these are these are what I need to, to generate these links now I need to figure out where this data is is it inside of the link like can I can I um, browse out to those links or can I figure out this stuff and the, the, the file that I'm in and or you know just different things and if I uh, needed to go out to forge and whatnot so this gave me a uh, you know an awesome um, place to start with and started to identify like you can see here unique ID for this wall um, there's IDs and things like that within the actual project. So like Here's an ex uh, another example if we go to Revit lookup we can go to snoop uh, DB and then we can go down to um, Profile or uh, uh, Sorry project info and then if we expand that we click on project information and it has a whole bunch of stuff like the unique ID but it also has the document and then within there we actually get a uh, model path and this model path has other stuff in it like the the uh, model GUID the project GUID the H um, the uh, central server path and like the project GUID that was that was one of the things that um, I had to look at I was like okay what is this GUID um, and then you know can I um, can I just pull it from here uh, and then because I, I, I need the project GUID for when I create um, an actual uh, link so anyways I just want to point out snoop is a really awesome tool that allows you to do uh, quite a bit um, it allows you to drill down into elements so look that up just look up Revit lookup and you'll be able to uh, find it uh, online I think it's the building coders blog you'll be able to download it uh, from his site uh, but check that out. Uh, it's really helpful for just anything with the Revit API. So anyways, uh, to get into it, we've got our architecture model. If you remember in the last video, we're going to automatically link in the MEP and the structural model. So if I go to manage links, 
Uh, I've got a keyboard shortcut shortcut for that ML. Um, and you can see we've got four placeholders. We're not linking in ITDG. We're linking in MEP um, and structural. And we're not linking in Arch because we are in the Arch model. So uh, what we're going to do is we'll drag this over. And um, this is the script. So this is a reformatted script. I had to reformat it um, to work with this workflow because the original one, if you remember, uh, was using the an Azure blob. Uh, as the storage and that's where we were storing the data retrieving the data um, that's so that we could work off of uh, you know 20 different machines or like we, we you know different machines that would automatically be running this Dynamo script uh, so that allowed us to easily do that uh, but in this workflow we use an Excel file um, and I, we're doing that because most people have access to Excel so that's um, you know a it kind of just fits um, a lot of folks and they can open it up and, and easily run this without any any problems uh, a couple things I want to point out is over here in the the first bit uh, this here is the model data and this is all this is is uh, reading the uh, the model path and so it said you know it says okay if this is here uh, if you have this CSV file here then we're going to um, we're going to loop through it and then get the data out of it and then uh, dump out a flattened list. And then here uh, in this else over here, um, it's going to say out, out equals BIM 360 model length doesn't exist when whenever that CSV file is not there. And this is just telling you, hey, you need to run that other DYN before you run this one. Um, and then I'm going to pan over here real quick because um, or actually let me I'm gonna jump back over here and in here I want to just delete this real quick because this is actually gonna delete that CSV as soon as I run this but we don't want to do that because we want to run this on three files so uh, I'll save changes and then what I'm gonna do is just run this so I'm gonna kind of drag this over a little bit so that you guys can see uh, what happens in the background when I run this. So, and then we'll go to a 3D view. I'm just gonna hide the ceiling and roof uh, of this architectural model. That way you can see the ducts come in and then you can see the columns come in. I'll press run and then it looks like we got an error so let's drag this over because um, this is always useful to look at anyways and we'll see kind of what's going on so this is telling us exactly what we need says it doesn't exist so let me copy that over there real quick um, and then rerun this so I'm gonna pause it okay sorry about that guys uh, what I had to do was rerun uh, the other script on the other models because when I was doing testing on this model I forgot to remove that code that deleted the CSV uh, but you got to see the um, the output of there no you know with with um, with no CSV there in that location um, it it gives you that hey you need that string that just says hey you need to to run the other script on the models so now that that's all good to go I'm gonna run this on this model and then you'll see in the background uh, this stuff populating So you, you'll see that's loading. You'll see there's the structural. So that's been linked in. And that's uh, that's the structural model from BIM 360. And then you'll see the duct uh, linked in. So that, um, that's it. That's the script. It looks at the uh, CSV file. Um, and then based off of that CSV file, uh, if there's any... Um, there's any, you know, because in that CSV there was an architectural 
uh, link data in there. Um, so all the information for the, the architectural model for, were in the architectural model, so it ignored that. Uh, but when you jump into the architectural model, or I mean into an MVP model or structural model, it'll link an architectural along with uh, whatever uh, other discipline it needs to. So, real quick, um, since I forgot to save this, I'm going to delete that again, save that. And um, real quick, I'll talk about this data. So we have the model data. And again, this is just reading in a um, CSV file and it's pulling out the data and, and getting it into a, a nice list. And then this comma separates it because um, these each of these inputs, so there's three models, um, three model data information, or just three model information there. And so there's uh, index 0, 1, 2, 3, and it takes each of those and it splits it. So we have um, three lists um, of a bunch of information that pertains to the links. And then um, we uh, split, what we do is we split uh, this one here, sorry, this uh, index 2 of, of each of these lists. We split that with a comma and then we have that information and then we, we, we kind of split the information into two, two different buckets and we pass that along to figure out exactly um, uh, the format that we need. So uh, we insert the data back in and it's just it's formatted appropriately and, and in, in the way that we need it for uh, the actual um, in, or the actual reference or the actual link. And so you'll see here. So again, all of this is just formatting the data. It gets it all nice and, and ready. And that's what it looks like at the end. We've got three lists and they're all organized correctly. The post from Luke Johnson, um, you'll see that's where like some of these groups came from. I just never renamed them. And so, um, we're not using virtual app, but you're gonna get the data from Excel. Um, this down here figures out which links you need to re reload. And I'll show you back in Revit which ones. So you can see here, we've got four links and these are the four links of the um, placeholder links. And you can see RTIDG, MVP and structural. And so what it does is it figures out, okay, what, what model are we in right now? And so it looks, um, it tries to figure that out. And then over here, um, it creates a, uh, a dictionary. And so you can see R structural ITDG MEP. Um, so, um, well, actually, this part really just gets the data organized. Uh, over here is where we actually uh, filter out the data and only retrieve what we need. So in this case, we only need the MEP and the structural. So it only grabs the two key and you can see here what the keys are. The keys are structural and MEP. And if we jump back over here where we actually created this dictionary, you can see structural MEP and then uh, the value for those keys are the actual um, Revit link elements. And so we're just using a dictionary because that way we can just easily call things like this. There's doesn't need to be any specific order, nothing. I just pass in keys and I get a return. Um, and so anyways, um, we pass that over here, down here, this, um, this is the link data. So this is all the data we need uh, for the links. And so, um, if you link in a bit, so I mentioned this earlier, if you link in like a model from BIM 360, you can use the lookup, um, uh, Revit lookup to, to look at a Revit link and see what exactly makes that link up. So what parameters and properties does it have um, that make that a link? And this Python script here, I, I did do some stuff in it um, just with the for loops, but 
the uh, the script here what it does is it, um, it it creates that external reference and so um, and the, and then actually um, yeah sorry I can't remember if I, I think I may have messed around with this part of it I may be wrong um, but if you start working on this script and you use Luke Johnson's you download it um, just back check this Python script I can't remember if I edited this or not but if you get any errors just let me know um, but this is all Luke Johnson stuff here um, and so uh, this creates the external uh, resource or um, you know, creates the the link pretty much uh, so the external reference and then um, uh, over here we actually uh, create or we actually reload the files so that's what this part does here and this is uh, uh, Luke Johnson uh, wrote this as well again some of these I know I've got in there and I, I messed around with certain things I don't think this was one of them but if you notice that uh, and you're like copying from the original script and getting errors just let me know because I, I go in there sometimes like if there's Python scripts that exist I'll edit them to maybe uh, take in like multi-level list stuff like that I can't remember if I did it to this one or not what the original one looked like um, but anyways if you get any if you run into any issues let me know so um, that's it you can see there um, that's the, the the script it's not too complex there's not a lot of stuff going on um, it's, it's mostly pretty simple and then um, real quick uh, I'll jump into manage links and then you can see what's going on there so you can see the arch and the ITGG placeholders there but structural and MEP one two three four um, they are reloaded and now you can see their BIM 360 paths so that's it that's that's it and I mean to really make this process efficient and effective for your company um, I would invest some time into to, to tools that will automatically run scripts for you. Maybe that starts with one computer. And so you get on that computer and you set up um, you know, uh, something that will automatically run these scripts, Imagine it Clarity, maybe it's Microsoft Flow, or some other uh, uh, robotic automation system. Um, you, you know, Use something like that to automatically run these and you'll save a huge amount of time because now now, um, you know, if the if you have models up there, and that's another awesome script, um, automatically uploading models, and then it's just a matter of automatically linking them. And so those are still those are two huge steps if you're doing setups every day. Um, even you know if you're doing setups once every couple couple days or whatever, um, it still saves time not having to. To, to, to open models just to link stuff in and you know when you actually get in there to do whatever kind of setup you'll already have that stuff there so anyways look at some tools that will help automate that stuff I'll try if I remember I'll try to put some down in the description let me know if I forget um, but anyways that's uh, all I got so uh, make sure to download the the, uh, the dynamo scripts and play with them yourself do what you you know want with them um, edit them, change them to your workflow, whatever, and feel free to reach out um, if you need any help. Anyways, thanks a lot, guys, and I will see you in the next video.